The Redmi K30 is the best mid-range phone right now. This, my friends, is the biggest upgrade since the Redmi K20. It is even better than three of the best mid-range phones that has released this year. And I just hoped you waited for this because this is such a great buy. All the best specs, all the newest technology, all packed in one very affordable smartphone. Again, Xiaomi with the first ever 64 MP Sony IMX686 sensor, plus the first 120 Hertz display on a Xiaomi device. And it's got a big battery and super fast charging, plus so much more. And it's under $300 or 15,000 pesos or 20,000 Indian rupees. No, I'm not kidding. It is the most exciting phone that we will be reviewing today. And without further ado, let the unboxing begin. No. All right, here we go. Now the box <laughs> looks different from the Redmi K20, but it does retain the Demon King logo right there. Plus, the Redmi K30 text is in rainbow. Pretty cool. And the configuration I have here is 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. Here we go. So, designed by Xiaomi. All right, there's the phone. Yes, you're gonna get a mini box right here with the SIM ejector pin and your usual manual and warranty. And of course, the jelly case with the cover. And here's the phone. Oh my god, just beautiful. Another gorgeous design from Xiaomi. But yes, let me just put you aside for now because there's something else in the box that is super exciting and it's actually this. For the first time, Xiaomi has included their flagship fast charging charger in their mid-range device. Guys, this is the Xiaomi Mi 9's charger, a 27 watt fast charger, just what you need on a phone that has a big battery. And of course, it includes a USB Type-C cable. All right, and that's pretty much it. And here's the phone, time to peel. And there you go. Now the first thing you're gonna notice here is that it definitely looks like the Huawei Mate 30. Let me just tell you right now that Xiaomi is infamous for copying a lot of phone companies like Huawei and Apple, but lately it's been Huawei, so yeah. They copy the same circular camera setup right here. It is just their traditional camera setup with a circular cutout. I know, it's kind of dumb. It just makes you feel like you're holding a Huawei Mate 30, but it's not. Also, it does look like a coin slot, if you know what I mean. Joking aside, the Redmi K30 is every bit as premium as the Huawei Mate 30. It just doesn't look like the Mate 30, but it also feels like it too. Very premium feeling. It's actually a big departure from the Redmi K20's design. If you remember, the Redmi K20's design was made for the younger audience like fiery back or icy back gamer like feels but this they went for a much more premium market like hey that looks like a very expensive looking phone much like the Huawei Mate 30 but with Google Apps so yeah that, that was funny. The back is made out of Gorilla Glass 5 and also the front. And as you can see, it has a punch hole. We'll cover that in a bit, but let's cover the back right here. Just like I told you, it's a Huawei Mate 30 copy. But then as you can see, it's kind of gradient from blue to kind of green right here. And oh, by the way, this is not the only color available. There's other colors just like the Mate 30. Okay, so the Redmi K30 has four cameras. Just like what I told you, it has the very first 64 MP Sony IMX686 sensor, and it also has an ultra wide angle lens, plus an eight megapixel ultra wide angle lens, two megapixel depth sensor, and a two megapixel dedicated macro lens. There's your LED flash, the Redmi logo, and that's pretty much it. It is a very minimalistic back. No more text anywhere else. At the bottom, it has a headphone jack, USB type support, microphone, and the loudspeaker. At the top, you get the IR blaster and a noise cancelling microphone. Oh, by the way, didn't you notice that there wasn't any fingerprint scanners right here? Cause it's actually at, nope, not the display, but right here at the sides on the power button. So yeah, this right here is a power button slash fingerprint scanner and it's not actually fast. I've seen much faster. This is this is okay. Not that instant. And yes, the volume rockers is right here at the top. At the left side, you get the SIM tray. And good news, it has an SD card slot plus a dedicated nano SIM card slot. And of course, the display. Here it is. Guys, this is a very long display. 6.67 inch, 1080p, 120 hertz, refresh rate, HDR10 enabled, IPS display. Yeah, you heard it right. It's only IPS. Well, for something that's under 15,000 pesos, and it's also a 
punch hole. Actually, punch hole designs are quite expensive to make. That's why it's only IPS. Well, basically, the punch hole is the place where we put the cameras. Usually, it's in the form of a notch, but right here, it is in a punch hole. And no, it doesn't mean it's better than a notch design. Because as you can see right here, it's blocking some parts of the content when playing YouTube. So there's that. And also, if you're not comfortable with this kind of design, well, there's going to be an adjustment period for you as the user. But I can assure you, even though it's IPS, quality-wise, it is a very good display. As you're seeing right now, the colors are actually pretty good, very vibrant. And yeah, it does make you feel like you're watching on a full screen, no-notch display, but somewhat not. But hey, there's actually a fix for this, especially when playing games. For example, right here at PUBG, as you can see, my thumb right here or my right hand is covering up this space right here or punch hole. It does reveal itself a little bit, but it's not distracting. All you need to do is to hold the phone at this orientation. Not like this, but like this. There you go. While we're here, let me just tell you right now that the game is only gonna max out at HD graphics and high frame rates. So yeah, the Redmi Note 8 Pro can actually go much higher with ultra frame rates, but this only maxing out at high graphics. So there you go. And as you can see, the game isn't really that smooth. Well, it's only HD graphics and high frame rates. So what can you expect? And also the sounds is... Pretty okay, it's not the best sounds out there. And yeah, you should play at this orientation because your hand is going to block this part of the loudspeaker. See that? That's a bummer, not cool. But it's a good thing we have the good old GFX tool to help us unlock the full potential of the phone. And yes, HDR, extreme frame rates. We just want to check out if the phone can really play the game at these max settings. Looks like it's having a hard time because it's not really that smooth. But the graphics is pretty good. I am thinking about 20 to 30 FPS. Yep, that is about right. And that's the thing. I mean, what's the use of a 120 hertz display if the game can only max out at 20 to 30 frames per second on this game. But yes, for the price, I can't complain. For something that's under $300, you not only get a great gaming phone, but also a phone with a great camera, great design, premium features, and things like that. And it looks like it's getting warm right here at the back. It's because it's pushing the processor too much. The graphics is just so demanding on this game that it's making the whole phone go hot. But nevertheless, anything that you see on a phone is just pretty darn good. This looks almost like an AMOLED display. I'm telling you, the sharpness, the contrast, and everything else right here on the interface is just so AMOLED-like. Bezels are super thin though, just like your all-screen no-notch display. Actually, it's pretty much just like the Redmi K30, just with a punch hole. Now don't worry about it. The punch hole is not gonna hide any of the information up here. Here, it's still gonna show the battery, your Wi-Fi, your signal, and everything else. Well, actually, it is just a taller version of the Redmi Note 8 Pro with this quirky design. The phone is surprisingly not that heavy, even though it has a 4,500 mAh of battery and has an aluminum body, which is very much appreciated. Although, it is quite thick, even though it's not using a pop-up camera anymore. And I think it's all because of that fingerprint scanner. They had to make it thicker for your thumb to actually fit just right in. Oh, by the way, for me, the biggest advantage of the Redmi K3 over the Redmi Note 8 Pro is this HFR mode. You can pretty much play the game very smoothly right here as you can see. Oh my god, that looks so good. Plus, you still get that punch hole, although everything else just looks so damn good. The display is super long. A lot can be seen in pretty much anywhere on the map. This is very useful when ganking, setting up for an ambush, and things like that. This is just what you need. Oh, by the way, now let's talk about that 120 refresh rate. I'm gonna tell you right now that 120 hertz display is not gonna be usable inside a game. Well, you can only see that 120 hertz performance right here on the homepage or when you're swiping here at Facebook or Instagram. It is uh, very fast. Sorry, my girlfriend is gonna kill me. So yeah, basically that 120 hertz display is just gonna make things look a lot more faster, smoother, and you might not see the difference right here in this video because it caps out at 60 frames per second. But maybe if you times to zoom the video right here, you will just see how fast this thing is. See that? Okay. Fast. And oh, by the way, this phone already has 
Android 10 and MIUI 11 right out of the box. So the latest and greatest MIUI version is right here. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, the cameras. All I can say is that the cameras on this thing is just amazing. I would have to say that compared to the Sony IMX586 sensor, the predecessor, the Sony IMX686 is in every way superior to its predecessor. I was just so glad that the camera was able to pick up so much detail and was able to avoid so much blurry images, which is very rare. In direct sunlight, I was expecting for some parts to be blown out, but no. Everything was well balanced thanks to the great HDR capabilities of the phone. And yes, the colors were the big thing here. I was just surprised at the level of sharpness I was getting with this phone. And it does have a 64 MP mode for a true 64 MP resolution. <laughs> Get this, it is instantaneous. No time for loading. Very nice and very much appreciated. And oh, by the way, let me just go to promo right here and just take a good look at this, guys. We have six manual settings, which you can play with. And the newest inclusion of the settings was the EV. You can also go 64 MP right here at the pro mode. And capture a true raw file. Oh my god. Yes, just like the Mi Note 10. Much more affordable version of it, that is. Here's a sample 64 image I took earlier, and just check that out. Oh my god. Just look how clear that detail is on the text. Zoom in, and let's zoom out. Boom. Of course, it's also good in low light. It also has the newest Night Mode 2.0, which takes better low light images. Pictures were a lot more crisp at night and a lot more clear. There were a lot of things revealed even at the darkest parts of the image. It was fairly impressive that it was able to do that. Last but not least is the video. And I gotta tell you, the video stabilization on this thing is just buttery smooth, almost gimbal-like. Although the video only maxes out at 4K at 30 frames per second because the processor is only a Snapdragon 730G processor. But don't worry, this is only the 4G version. We might see a much better settings on their newest processor next year, which is the Snapdragon 765 processor. Speaking of next year, I will also be getting the 5G version of this and review it for you guys as well. But oh my god, have they done a great job with this phone right here. And I think this pretty much completed their year. Incredible year for Xiaomi, my friends. Oh, by the way, get this. The base variant is only 13,600 pesos at Shundi Philippines. That is for the 6128 and the 8 one to eight is 14,000 900 pesos all the way to 17,200 pesos for the 256 internal storage. So if you ask me right now, which is the best mid-range phone this year? Look no further. It is the Redmi K30. Wait, why not the Mi 90 Pro or the K20 Pro? Well, even though it has a flagship processor, the number of tech placed inside of this thing is just incredible. It might not be the fastest, but it sure as hell is the best in terms of tech and price. That's right, price. It is almost the same as the Redmi Note 8 Pro and it looks like it too. Too, just taller. So yes, I highly recommend the Redmi K30 and I just hoped that you've saved some money for the Redmi K30 and didn't buy this. Because I already told you guys that this wasn't good in my review. For those who waited, lucky for you, this is my recommendation. Up next on Tech Beans, the Redmi K30 versus the Redmi Note 8 Pro. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any of my great content and also this matchup. This is Vincent Micro from Tech Beans and I'll see you on the next video.